Nice pad. Richard, you haven't changed at all, Bruce. You might be surprised. What was that back there? A mask. It's a way to keep my lives separate. I can't think of the last time we saw each other. I bet you can remember the last time. The first time, too. I'm eager to learn. They all say that. Ben Turner. <laughs> Richard Dragon. Shiva. Disciplined, honorable. <laughs> She's very dedicated. Ben. Shiva. I assume you're in some kind of trouble. The Cobra Cult. A worldwide organization of murderous zealots. Kill them. <laughs> We have to stop it, no matter what. I ain't ever gonna turn down whooping somebody's ass. No matter how much you train, evil remains. We're not done yet. Begin. A quarry is a bit more formidable than we thought. That's handy. This isn't gonna be easy. Remember, you are stronger together than apart. Hi guys, welcome to our cast and filmmakers panel of Batman Soul of the Dragon. I am Valentina Pulgarin, your host right now. This is the next film in the popular DC Universe movie series from Warner Bros. Animation, DC and Warner Brothers Home Entertainment. Batman Soul of the Dragon will be available on digital January 12th and also the 4K Ultra HD Combo Pack and Blu-ray on January 26th. Okay, so hello guys, how are you? Good, Hi. how are you? Good. Hi, so I would like to do some introductions for our panelists and I'm here with um, Mark Duquescos, who gives voice to, to Richard Dragon. Hi. <laughs> Hello, muito obrigado. Oh, okay. no, come on. Yeah, this guy. Oh my God, wow. guys. I had to, it's I'm the only sorry. thing I know. <laughs> <laughs> you <Wow>. want it. <laughs> also, I'm here with Kelly Hu, the voice of Lady Shiva. Um, also, Michael J. White, who is again in his role of Ben Turner, Brown Tiger, that he did also on Arrow, right? Yes, yes. Hello. Obrigado. <laughs> ah, nice. Um, I'm here also with screenwriter Jeremy Adams. Hi. Oh. <laughs> also director and producer Sam Liu. Oh. And executive producer Bruce Tim. Now that the intro is done, uh, let me ask you, where in the world are you? Because I am in Brazil. Los Angeles. Okay, LA. Los Angeles. Yeah. Los Angeles. LA. LA. Uh -huh. uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Really? Oh, okay, a little bit different. He's always been different. <laughs> yeah, I gotta say, it's, it's so weird for me to be in this panel with you guys because you know I've seen you, you know, your movies. It's I've weird seen. for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 surreal right now. So yeah. Uh, so for starters, guys, um, to Bruce, Jam, and Jeremy, what was the inspiration for the Batman Elseworlds tale? Um. It's it, it's something I've had kind of in the back of my head for a long time. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of like comics of the 1970s and the, the early 70s. That's when I was a teenager myself. So pop culture stuff from the 1970s is kind of like imprinted on my brain. And uh, the, two of the, the really big things in pop culture back then were black exploitation movies like Shaft and Superfly and you know uh, uh, all those different you know Jim Brown movies and Jim Kelly movies and also martial arts movies, like all the Bruce Lee movies. So in my head, I kind of always wanted to kind of mash those two up together. That, that's basically, that was, that was the gist of it. And uh, fortunately for us, there was this, this wonderful comic book that came out in the 70s, the, the um, Kung Fu Fighter, Richard Dragon, the Kung Fu Fighter series, which had like kind of all that stuff in it. It had, you know, Richard Dragon and Ben Turner and Lady Shiva. And I realized it was like kind of a, kind of, kind of ticked off all my boxes and uh, figured we could do it as a, as a Batman movie to just kind of jam Batman in there. Could you guys, all of you, talk about the true ensemble nature of this cast, their characters, and how they fit together um, in this story? 
Anyone? Uh, Anyone? Don't everybody rush. Yeah, I, I, know. Say, I already had my moment. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I will say that when we were talking about this uh, story, I think very intentionally early on, we wanted to make it unusual to a Batman story. So it's not just singularly focused on Batman. It really is an ensemble piece in which each of the characters kind of shine. And to a degree, Batman is kind of, um, I, I wouldn't say he was the focus at all, you know, in a lot of ways. <laughs> I mean, he he's there, but it's so much about Richard Dragon and Shiva and uh, Bronze Tiger. And, and because I think intuitively as an audience, we know Batman and we kind of get Batman, even though this is a different version. And so we really got to um, explore these other characters in a way that I, I'm hoping the audience will really gravitate to because I feel like it came out incredibly well, especially with the voice cast and mm -hmm. uh, the the kind of like, you guys have this martial arts pedigree anyways. So mm -hmm. I feel like that brings an extra dimension to these characters that have that as well. I think it's so funny that you guys actually cast real martial artists, mm -hmm. you know, because like, you know, we we all do martial arts films and we're all, you know, known. I mean, I take on these guys any day of the week. <laughs> <laughs> I would get my butt kicked. Are you kidding? <laughs> But but it was so fun knowing them, uh, you know, Michael and, and Mark so well and and just seeing listening to their voices, doing these characters who are almost as badass as they are in real life. <laughs> I mean, almost, 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 because these guys are amazing. So I love that you guys cast like all like real life martial artists. And um, and now I see it, it was intentional, obviously, because you wanted that feel, right? To a degree. Uh, uh, honestly, I, I'm, I'm just impressed. I was surprised that you guys actually all knew each other. That was, that was uh, amazing to me. It's like, oh, hey, Mark. And you guys are like talking to each other. And it's like, wow, I didn't realize you guys are all had known we've each other for a long time. Not only known each other, but we've all fought against one another at some point <laughs> in our career. That's crazy. I hope, right? Or not with, on the or on the same team, <laughs> right? Because I've teamed up with both of y'all. I've kissed yeah. both of y'all. <laughs> Mark and I have worked on a couple of projects together, but never in the same darn That's scene. Right. That's right. That's right. Oh. Like we've never been on, on, you know, on screen together. So you guys have never actually had to fight one another. No, or, no. or even do dialogue with each other. Not yet. Needs to no. That. Yes, it's, that has to happen, guys. Bruce. I've been wanting to work with Mark for freaking twenty years. Yeah. <laughs> right. Likewise. I mean, if somebody had something bad to say about Mark, I, I'd almost fight them. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I know. Don't hurt them, oh. Michael. We know you can. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, thank you, guys. I, I, I'm so happy to be a part of this. You know. My wife and I watched it the night before last. We loved it. Every character has this uh, very colorful and um, full of notes backstory. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everybody together, we, we kind of mesh and, you know, tug and pull and push each other. Um, really, really heartfelt. And um, yeah, Kelly, man, I, your character, man, you are spicy. I know. She's so much cooler than I can ever be. <laughs> like, I, I am so her. not a cool chick. Yes, the best dialogue. Everything's super flat. She's just like, she, it's like she's like a human beta blocker. Like, she, her, her adrenaline never in. She's always in control. Except when that sword gets stolen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. then am I giving that in? Am I giving stuff away? Am I giving stuff away? No, but like, then all of us sudden you see her adrenaline go from here to here like she's yeah, yeah. always in control yeah. this girl is a like a, a real killer amazing amazing i'll Absolutely. never be that cool uh. just so you know and this film is obviously based on characters created by dennis o'neill um could you guys tell us the depth of influence he had on this film I'm sure some of our fans will probably go, oh, wait a minute, now I, I, in, in the comics, Richard Dragon is a white guy with, with orange hair, mm -hmm. and now he's suddenly Asian. And that is exactly, the reason that came about is my first experience with the character was in Denny's original novel from like 1974, oh. 1975. And as you can see on the cover there, he looks kind of like Bruce Lee. He's clearly an Asian yes. guy. Yes. So 
I figured, well, I, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, you know, go back to what I originally thought of when, when I thought he was an Asian guy. It kind of makes more sense, anyways. I kind of like having the the multiculturalism of having, you know, Bruce Wayne and then, you know, Richard and Shiva and Ben. So it's, you know, it's definitely it's 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 better for diversity, but it's also just kind of feels more right for the period. So that's where that came about. Uh, Denny, I knew Denny just slightly when we first started doing Batman the Animated Series. We flew to New York to meet, to meet with the people at DC Comics just to kind of get their input on what we were doing. And Denny was one of the people that we met there and he was, he was a real big fan of, of the stuff that we were talking about. Um, and we had done a short little Batman film and he had seen that and he went, wow, that's exactly what the cartoon should look like. So yeah, you guys are on the right track. You don't need me to, to tell you what, what to do. There's that, that scene where um, Shiva is fighting Rip Jagger in the flashback and the whole bit was like, oh, you can only use one finger. That's that's right out of this. Oh book. And it's, oh. it's in the comic as well. So oh my god, that was, kind of a neat, that was a neat bit. I thought that was Kelly's idea. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, because just she's able to do that in real life, maybe. <laughs> I love the fact that you guys chose to set it in the seventies. You know, I love that that decade uh, from somebody. You know, I mean, that's why I wrote black uh, black. Um, Black Dynamite. Dynamite. <laughs> there's only black things going on. Like, you know, there's black women, there's black not, there's all, but but it, it's it's um it's my favorite uh period of music, uh movies, and it's it's just the birthplace of when things were cool. It's the birthplace of cool just all over the place, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I really applaud setting it there. I think that was brilliant. I will say that like, even when I was writing something, if I got too far, like uh, Bruce, didn't you say it was like, oh no, you can't talk about disco here because this is, this is before that. This is this, you had like a specific like cutoff in like 74 or something, you know? Yeah, yeah. As, we were, as we were breaking the, 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 the story down, we were, I mean, cause I hadn't had a night, a, a, a concrete idea in my head that it took place in a specific year. Um, they, they would kept throwing out story ideas. It was like, yeah, they go, oh yeah, then we can do like this whole stu Studio 54 thing and, and we can make this joke about disco is dead and everything. And I'm like, no, that's not right. It's not right. And it's like, it dawned on me. It's like, yeah, it's 1973 feels really different than like 1977 or 78. It's like the clothes are different. The, you know, yeah. the attitudes are different. It's like, yeah. I think in the beginning, we see a lot of mustaches and kind of mullet, something and, going everyone's on Everyone's got there. sideburns. There's yeah, a lot of sideburns, exactly. You know? <laughs> Yeah. Going back to how badass all of this cast of heroes is and how you guys have an impressive amount of martial arts expertise. Now that you've seen the film, how do you feel it captures the essence of martial arts fighting? My form is not nearly as good as she was. <laughs> Are you kidding? No, but it, I, I, I thought it was great. And you know, it, it's, it's really smart of you guys to cast actual martial artists because in the fight scenes, when you're doing um, like uh, uh, fight sounds, you know, I, I have to say you can, I, when I watch um, animation and there's fighting, I can tell if the girl has not actually ever done martial arts. Mm -hmm you know, because of their reaction and their hits and things like that. It just doesn't sound right. I um, bet you, Kelly, I bet you fill in those sounds when you're all by yourself. Ooh, ah, totally, ooh, totally. Yeah. Are you kidding? <laughs> Killing a mosquito? Ooh, ah. Right, yes. <laughs> I, love, I love the spirit and the philosophy um, you captured, we captured um, of the martial arts. You know, mm. of course the, the action is there, but the, the spirit and the humility and respect you know the um, I, I you know that the essence of it. It's 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 so much more yeah. than just the fighting, and I feel that that you gave us that in in the script. You we know? tried, of course. James Hong is so great at playing yeah. sensei. You yeah. know? He, he really you know conveys that. That is Richard, Richard Dragon. Each are unique in their own way, as you will be. You, you captured a bit of the the pure your, the purity of when martial arts was in that that early stage when it, when it was still a weapon you know mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. later it became more of an art and the mm -hmm. fight scenes and everything were more of spectacle but mm -hmm. early on what, what you what I love that you captured is that it had that more um, one shot one kill type of essence that that martial arts started with. It's a, it's, it's something that's kind of long gone. I mean, because all of your characters, right, are supposed to be 
badasses in their own right. Like each one of your characters can carry their own book. Do you know what I mean? And so when we were trying to, um, you know, cultivate the story, um, we had to make sure that every one of you guys are masters at basically, you know what I mean? At your discipline. The script was great. I mean, I remember when we first read it and just, you know, I'm, you know, I'm trying to dissect, you know, characters and philosophies and, you know, um, you know, your, your character paths and, and, and each one of you had such a great path of starting someplace, turning into something else because of an event and then redemption ultimately, you know, your voices, your reads, you know, the sincerity of a lot of it, the angst of it, the pain in, in a lot of it really gave us a lot of places to go. Again, this is like a real pleasure to work with. I mean, it's, you know, it's a, it's a fun mm -hmm. sort of high adventure sort of with deeply personal things. I feel like each character has their their path and their, and their growth. I have to give credit to you guys because I think what a lot of people don't realize is that we as actors were never in the same room, yeah. right? We were always separate, but yet you guys made it so that the dialogue and the scenes really flowed very mm -hmm. well. And the interaction between the, the, the characters, the, it, was, it was seamless. Big applause to Wes, our voice director too, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Martial arts, is a really hard thing to sort of choreograph. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> All those moves. So many poses that are very specific. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so we tried to get as much as we could. And we tried to get each each of you at least a flourish. You know, where you could like something hopefully sort of genuine feels like it's happening. You know. I when I I remember that was one of the first things I noticed when I watched the fight scenes. I watched some of the forms and poses, and I was like, oh these guys actually know martial arts. These guys who are drawing this stuff actually know like some of these, these poses and things like that. Because oftentimes when you watch fight scenes in other animations, you're like, oh, what, what is that? Like, what is that form? Yeah. Like, but this, it was, it was quite obvious in the way that you guys, you know, you did your homework and, and, and did like, you know, stances and things like that. And I was like, oh, that's some nice form going on yeah. over there. <laughs> Nice. Uh, so guys, without giving any spoilers, but just a little bit, what is your favorite line or scene in the film and why? There's so many. I think mm -hmm. Shiva has a lot of really good like one-liners. Mm -hmm. I love how you guys directed me to like, you know, sort of like downplay her. She does, you know, very, very cool, calm and, and collected. Almost every one of her lines is like a cool one-liner. I am a big fan of Richard Dragon at the very beginning when he lands on the boat. That's what I was going to say, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> Mainly because it kind of like, it, 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 he says it and then we go right into the title sequence and it's like, this is what this movie is. <laughs> and I remember, um, because I had never really, I had never really worked with Bruce before. And I remember him, you coming in, and I had been talking about Batman versus Enter the Dragon for a while, and you had said, yeah, 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 but like, also, uh, Big Trouble in Little China. And I was like, ah! you know, it was like, it was like my heart's desire, you know, and, and, yeah. and so that is like, there's that moment of like, hey, this is, this is going to be fun and adventurous and kind of scary and weird and also a little cocky. And I'm like, yes, this is this is awesome. <laughs> you know, I love that. You know, we gotta give a shout out to, to the composer, Yoki Joachim. Like Ooh, so the music good. in this is like Yeah, epic. Yeah. yeah. I want a I want a record. I'll buy a record player. Oh, oh vinyl. Yeah. yeah. So Listen to it while looking at the album art. <laughs> yeah, totally. Because <laughs> Bruce and I were kind of talking about too, is like, you know, how do you sort of set something in the 70s? Do you know what I mean? It's like you can have like visual kind of tropes and stuff like that, mm -hmm. but that's gonna wear off at a certain point. So I remember, you know, Bruce and I having these conversations, you know, just about how like we got to make sure that the music keeps us sort of in this era. How did you know Joaquin Horsley was the right choice to compose this film? I mean, this is Bruce's love letter, basically. Do you know what I mean? And I kind of knew that, you know what I mean, going in, because, you know, in, in the previous movies that we work on, there, you know, there's there's times where I'm trying to like, you know, push my sort of, you know, ideas and agendas and stuff like that. But this one, I knew that this is, this is just a small, silly, stupid thing, but I remember we were going through props, right? Mm -hmm. All the cars in the movie, the sort of main ones, are either cars that Bruce's family owned at some point. <laughs> or my friends owned, yeah, that's true, yeah, that, yeah. 
so again, like the music, you know, again, like, you know, uh, I remember we, we screened like quite a few composers, right, Bruce? We went through like 20 different composers. Yeah. Or just just wow. listening to their, to, their, um, to their demo tapes. And it was, yeah. uh, most of them were just like, ah, no, that's not right at all. But we did get it narrowed down to about, about three that we were like, yeah, there, there's some potential here. And, uh, and then, then we, we, Sam and I knocked it down to like two. There was, it was Joachim and this other guy. And we kept going back, we kept going back and forth on it. It's like all oh, the, the various, you know, the various pros and cons. And we definitely, we knew that we wanted it to have that, 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 that very 70s sound, but at the same time, we didn't want it to sound like a parody of the 70s because it's so easy to overdo it. And it kind of thing it came down to, it's like, yeah, which, which one of these guys do we want to hear their music more? score you know even if you look at like 70s uh, movies and stuff like that right there's a period where like there's certain emotional tones that, that it mm -hmm. sounds timeless it doesn't sound 70s you know what i mean so we were trying to right. figure out like because i don't know to me anyways the sound the you know the wah -wah sort of guitars and stuff like that it's kind of there's that happiness to it like how do you get a sad moment yeah. but still keep yeah. it 70s and a lot of times it kind of just goes back to sort of a more classical kind of sound, you know? Well, that was the interesting thing, because we knew we were going to use a lot of the, 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 the like you said, the, the waka waka guitars, but then it was like, okay, yeah, what are we going to do for like the scary sounds? Like what, what's a 70s scary sound? And we, yeah. you know, we, I, I would go on YouTube and try to find like things from like 70s movies and I'd send them to, to Joachim and he'd go, yeah, I, I kind of get that, you know, I, I can try that. But there's a scene, I won't, I won't spoil it too much, but there's a scene with a snake chamber, yeah. which is really terrifying and he pulled this, I don't know where his inspiration for it was, what the, the music that he did. But to me, when I listen to it, it's like, wow, that totally sounds like, like a Dario Argento movie from like 1975. Mm. It sounds like Deep Red or something. It's like, wow, that's terrifying. So he, he kind of he, he kind of managed to find nice. 70s kinds of sounds for that. And there's a scene early on, there's like a romantic scene between Bruce Wayne and, uh, and this woman. And again, it, it doesn't sound like, 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 like a cliched 70s thing. But when I listen right. to it, I think like Sam and I both said, it's like, yeah, it's, it's the Young and the Restless. It's Nadia's theme. It sounds, <laughs> like, it sounds like, you know, it's very 70s, so. Uh, did you guys thought about any slangs or something like that that could go, go to that era? We, we went back and forth. Um, <laughs> Jeremy and Jim were constantly trying, trying to like use as much 70s lingo as possible, which is fine. I was all for that, but they would, sometimes it would just be like tortured. It was just like, oh, that's like you're trying way too hard to say the word fox. <laughs> um, I tried to make it sound as natural as possible. You know, I try, I try to put in all those little 70s signifier dialogue bits. Um, so, that, you know, it's like at, at one point, I think even in one of Michael's lines, he said, he goes, no, I'm done. And I said, oh, we should say I'm done baby. Because man, that is like, you know, Richard Roundtree would always call everybody baby in all the Shaft movies, you know? Yeah. So it's like just little things like that just try to like kind of, kind of keep you in that, in that, that zone. Yeah. So he was great. Nice. And Michael and Kelly, you are both um, bringing again characters, roles that you've already brought to us. Michael as Bronze Tiger in Arrow and Kelly as Shiva in Batman Arkham Origins, mm -hmm. um, the video game. Um, <laughs> what would these characters write in your wheelhouses and how did you vary the characters for this film? I feel like I'm always playing, um, you know, these action girls, these action villains. And I think it's because, you know, once somebody sees you kick a guy's ass on screen, they want to draw it as well. You know? <laughs> it's kind of fun, though. I love that I exist in this world, in this universe, because nobody has more fun than I do when I get to play characters and I get to voice characters or, you know, I mean, because when you're playing these kind of roles that are, you know, not not confined to reality, you get to be so much more creative and and bigger and more just larger than life. And um, and so yeah, it, existing in this world of of animation and superheroes and villains is just it's the best job ever. Seriously. Yeah, you know, play Bronze Tiger. The difference in this one is, uh, you know, make, I'm making them more seventies. So when I played it on Arrow, I'm making them contemporary. Yeah. But to to add the seventies in it, you know, got. <laughs> <laughs> It's a little different, man. You know, so so you know, it's kind of just bringing them into that 
time zone. <laughs> no, I was in all those scenes with you in Arrow when you were playing yeah. uh, Bronze Tiger, right? I would have, I would have died laughing. Yes, no, and you did like more, right? Um, and Mark, uh, Richard Dragon is making his animation and film debut in this movie. Um, how did you and the producers go about crafting the voice and uh, the voice that you used for his animated unveiling? Again, when I was reading the script for the first time, when when you had that introduction of Richard, you know, saying his name, I just thought, oh my gosh, I want to be this guy. I like, in real life, I want to be this guy. It was such a great yeah. entrance. But yeah, they, um, you know, we, they had me start off and then, you know, depending on what the line was and when I when I hit the accents or, or volume or whatever, they just, we kind of tweaked it, collaborative, we tweaked it right there, Bruce, Sam, um, um, just kind of worked me, you know, uh, in the studio while we were doing it. And we together found, uh, found his voice. Nice pad. Richard, you haven't changed at all, Bruce. Now, of course, Jeremy gave us, you know, great dialogue um, mm. and, uh, and a full character. So it was easy to find the heart, but we, we worked collaboratively. Uh, to find the voice. These are iconic roles, um, Shiva, Bronze Tiger, and even Richard Dragon. So regarding the legacy of these characters, um, what are what is the response you got from the fans that love them so very much? I mean, when we did it, I thought, I don't know how people are going to react to this because, I mean, I, I love it because it's, it's my childhood, you know, it's the 70s. And it's like, I think a lot of people <laughs> Um, have a tendency to look back at the 70s and think, oh, it's just avocado refrigerators and <laughs> carpeting and all of that, that nasty stuff and paisley shirts. Um, but so I didn't know if people were going to get excited about that aspect or not, but, but people seem to be into it. I mean, a lot of people I've talked to about it, they're like super into the idea of doing something that's set in the 70s that embraces like the Kung Fu craze and black exploitation movies and everything of that era. Yeah, I mean, nice. just on top of that, like the, the DC has this great history of martial art characters. Mm -hmm. And so I know that those fans are really excited because it does seem that we're like just perfectly focused on martial arts in the DC universe. And I'm one of those people that love um, all the, the different, like there's always that question. You can even like Google it, like who's the best martial artist in the DC mm -hmm. universe? And it'll be like, here's 50. And now you have to choose, and there's kind of a fight between people. Um, Steve is always in the top three. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when do you choose? Black, Black Canary, and I think the question maybe. I'm not maybe. sure. Maybe. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, and these elsewhere tales open a wide palette for stories. Um, where would you like to place Batman next? Well, it's funny. Jeremy and I, and and uh, one of my, uh, my my producer buddies, James Tucker, were just emailing some different ideas. Because we've got our whole next movie planned. If this one's a success, we've got a sequel ready to go. That's um, if anything, even more seventies than this one. So <laughs> I can't, I can't say what it's about because it's, it's pretty, I like that. pretty crazy. <laughs> okay, guys. So thank you everyone. I think this is it. Do you have any, um, left message that you want to bring to your fans about this film? The only other thing I think we mentioned is his name once, but I just want to, I just want to say again, James Hong, uh, is, is somebody I've wanted to work with for like forever. And um, he plays uh, their their mentor, the Osensei, and he's yeah. amazing in this movie. He's so good, and he's like, I think he's like ninety three now, but he's so sharp, and he's so he's so energetic and so full of life. And um, his performance is is wise and funny and badass. And he's just, it was a total delight to have have James Hong. Okay, guys, thank you, thank you so much for watching this panel at home. And also, thank you, the panelists, for joining me today. And a quick reminder, Batman Soul of the Dragons will be available on digital January 12th, and also the 4K Ultra HD Combo Pack and Blu-ray on January 26th. Thank you so much, guys. Goodbye. Ciao. <laughs> Valentina, thank you for um, for hosting us. Yes, yes. thank, oh, you, thank you, guys. Thank you for making such an awesome, badass movie. That's yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun.